Hi everyone, and welcome back to Neuropsychology. So, in the last uh, video, we covered all the parts of the neurons. So, we talked about the dendrites, the axon hillock, uh, how does the beginning of the actual axon. We talked about the terminal buttons, um, the synapse, neurotransmitter, and a lot of other terms. If you have not watched that video yet, please go back and watch that before um, you watch this one. So in this video, we are going to talk about um, how our neuron works as a factory. So neurons, just like a lot of other cells, are technically little miniature factories. And the product of neurons are proteins. So to understand these factories, let's go over the anatomy of the cell first. So in this cell, uh, sorry, in this video, we will cover um, what is the cell membrane, the nucleus, the endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, mitochondria, lysosomes, tubules, microfilaments, etc. And then we will briefly talk about how the membrane works. Okay, so in our miniature factories, the cell membrane separates the neuron from the outside world, including um, for intruders. So the cell membrane therefore can regulate the materials that enter the factory or that leave the factory. So the cell membrane uh, envelopes the entire cell, so the cell body, the dendrites, the axons, and its terminals. So it's the whole outside of the entire cell, not just the uh, cell body. Cells cannot eat easily or other products or molecules cannot easily leave or enter the cell because the membrane is very, very hard to get through. So therefore we have proteins inside of our membrane that serve as factory gates. So there are big gates in the membrane that allow certain substances to leave or to enter and they can deny other chemicals uh, to enter or leave also. So this is really important because it keeps the chemical concentrates, uh, concentrations the way they need to be for regular functioning. Okay, so inside of the cell and inside of the cell body, there is a nucleus. So the nucleus also has a membrane, which is called the nuclear membrane. So don't get confused with the cell membrane and the nuclear membrane. They're similar, but the nuclear membrane is only around the nucleus. So the nucleus um, is kind of the CEO of the entire factory and the nucleus has all the blueprints of the factory um, and it includes the genes and the chromosomes. So here's where the blueprints for all the cell proteins are stored and copied. We're gonna talk about the um, creation of proteins later on but first we're going to go over all the little parts of the factory. Okay, so when needed, these genetic instructions from the nucleus can go to the factory floor. So the endoplasmic reticulum is technically our factory floor. So here things are created. So here these proteins are created. Um, the endoplasmic reticulum is an extension of the nuclear membrane and here, all the proteins or the protein products are uh, assembled. So whenever these proteins are finished and they're all ready to be sent off, they are sent to this thing called the Golgi apparatus. So as you can see right here, here you have the nucleus and then here you have the endoplasmic reticulum. So when these proteins are ready to go, they get... Um, packaged into a vesicle and sent to the Golgi apparatus. So the Golgi apparatus um, passes them along to a transportation network or FedEx. So technically what the Golgi apparatus does is it packs these proteins in technically how they do in FedEx in nice boxes or something. Okay, well then the Golgi apparatus will send it um, to the FedEx of the cell. And the cell's FedEx is a system of tubuli that carry the packaged proteins to their final destination, so wherever they're needed. 
So um, here you have microtubuli and here you have the microfilaments. So tubuli also um, help give shape to the cell. And then microfilaments, micro uh, as you can see right here, those are a form of tubuli and they form the cell structural network and they also help with the movement of the cell. So here you see all the microtubuli, so whenever proteins need to be sent down, um, with the help of these tubuli, they can be sent down the axon. Okay, two other vital components of our cellular um, miniature factory are mitochondria, which we all know what mitochondria are, but these are technically the power source of the cell and they supply the cell with energy. And then also lysosomes. Lysosomes are sac-like vesicles and they transport incoming supplies and they also help move out um, waste. So they use enzymes for that to be able to get rid of the waste and kind of throw it outside of the cell. Okay, so here is a full overview of all the cell components that we just talked about. So we talked about dendrites and dendritic spines. We didn't have a picture of dendritic spines yet, so here you go. <laughs> then we talked about the nucleus, which is in the cell body. These are technically the CEO and have the blueprints of all the um, protein product uh, synthesis. So they contain the chromosomes and genes. Then we have the nuclear membrane, which is the membrane only around the nucleus. Mitochondria, which um, give the cell energy. We have the endoplasmic reticulum, which is here. It's a, a folded layers of the membrane where proteins are uh, assembled. Then I'm gonna switch over to the Golgi body or the Gol Golgi apparatus. And this is also a membranous um, structure and this packages the proteins for transport. Then we have, of course, the intracellular fluid and outside is the extracellular fluid. Tubuli are right here. Here you have the cell membrane. So see that the cell membrane is around the entire cell, whereas the nuclear membrane is only around the nucleus. Then here's the axon hillock, here's the start of the axon. Here you have microfilaments. Um, here you have these little lysosomes. And we covered everything in this picture. Okay, so I know these are a lot of terms, but if you rewatch the first part another time, um, I think you will definitely remember most of these. Okay, so cells, um, including neurons and glia, they are cushioned by a fluid. So this is an extracellular fluid. And technically what this is, is this is water with dissolved sub substances. So inside of the cell, there's also fluid, and this is called the cytoplasm or intracellular fluid. So this is also made up of water and dissolved substances. However, the concentration of salts and other substances in this water are different inside versus outside of the cell. So one substance within the cell, uh, within the cell fluid are salts. So salts are molecules that separate into two parts whenever they're dissolved in water. So then one part will carry a positive charge and another part will carry a negative electrical charge. So an example of a salt is, let's say, regular table salt. So table salt is, um, in chemistry, we call that sodium chloride. And if you dissolve that in water, it will split up in positive sodium and a negative chloride ion. So these cells form part of the extracellular and intracellular fluid. So in these fluids, we also have protein molecules, um, and these are actually hundreds times larger than salt ions. So remember that the concentrations of these ions and molecules are different inside versus outside of the cell. 
Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the cell membrane. I know in the last picture there's a cute little picture of it, but let's talk about it a little bit more in this slide. So the cell membrane is a double layer that regulates the movement of substances in and out of the cell. So it's technically the big wall around the factory. So it also regulates the concentrations of salts and other chemicals on both sides of the cell. So how does it do that, right? So the membrane is made up of a phospholipid bilayer. So I uh, found this picture online. Here you have the phospholipid bilayer. So it's called a bilayer because it has two layers. So the heads um, of, the, of this phospholipid bilayer, so these little balls right here and down here, these heads of the phosphor molecules, they are hydrophilic and therefore they're attracted to water as they are polar. So hydrophilic in Greek literally means water loving. So and then the little tails right here are nonpolar and they are made up of lipid molecules, so they're fatty. And these are hydrophobic, which means fear of water in Greek. So therefore, this bilayer is arranged that the hydrophobic, uh, hydro, sorry, hydrophilic heads um, of one side are in contact with the extracellular fluid, and on the other side, they're in contact with the intracellular fluid. So and then the tails in the middle right here, um, they stay inside of the double layer, so they're kind of hidden from the water. So let's say this is the inside of the cell and this is the outside of the cell. These um, phosph um, hydrophilic heads will be in contact with the extracellular fluid and these will be in contact with the cytoplasm. Okay, so here is literally what, what we just said, but then in cool looking pictures. So let's go over these step by step. So here you have the entire cell and this um, beige looking color is the cell membrane, goes all around the cell. So it's made up of a phospholipid bilayer and um, that separates the extracellular fluid um, with the cytoplasm. So here you have extracellular, cytoplasm, hydrophilic heads, hydrophobic tails. So the hydrophilic head has polar regions whereas the hydrophobic tails do not have that. So here you see a more detailed um, chemical composition of these little components. So this group, the phosphate group, will bind to water, whereas the fatty acid tails will not bind to water at all. Okay, so the cell membrane is therefore impermeable to extra or intracellular fluids since they're mostly made out of water and this cannot cross the middle fatty substance of the layer. Um, on top of that, the polar heads also repel charges carried by other polar molecules, so those po polar molecules can also not freely pass through. So water can go through, polar mo molecules can go through. So the only thing that can go through are small nonpolar molecules. So examples of this are oxygen or O2 or carbon dioxide, CO2, and sugar uh, glucose. And those can freely pass through these bilayers whenever they want, so in and out. So how do other substances go in and out of these cells? So in the membrane, um, we have protein molecules that are embedded inside of the membrane, and they technically act as like gates or big doors and they let certain substances in and out of the um, cell or factory and they also facilitate the, deliver the delivery of supplies and they help out with the uh, uh, disp disposal of waste and also with the shipment of products. Okay, so we covered the basics so far. We're going to dive deeper into this in the next video. So I will see you back soon.